right, before we get started, I wanted to address um, how today's presentation will go. Um, after the presentation, there'll be a question and answer session. You can submit your questions via the Q&A box at the bottom, or you can raise your hand and we can call on you to ask your question aloud. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to uh, Tomas. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Uh, hello, uh, good uh, morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back uh, to our Research at Home uh, webinar series. Uh, this is the first one of 2021. So happy new year to everybody. Uh, somebody told me today that um, um, in a meeting earlier that they, this person had decided that the year 2021 is started on January 20th of 2021. Um, so uh, I found that kind of interesting. So anyway, welcome every, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, with us here, Professor Fabio Ribeiro from Purdue University. Uh, Fabio is a great friend and colleague um, with whom I work very closely. Uh, during the years that I was at uh, Purdue. And uh, he really, uh, um, you know, has, has um, started and is leading uh, a fantastic, tremendous effort um, funded by the National Science Foundation and the Engineering Research Center um, on um, the conversion of uh, alkanes to high value chemicals and fuels. Uh, that he is going to be talking about today. Uh, Fabio is the Norris and Eleanor Schiff Professor of Chemical Engineering and the director of the SciStar Center from, uh, funded by the National Science Foundation uh, at the Davidson School of Chemical Engineering at Purdue. Um, he's had a long career of excellence uh, that has been recognized with a tremendous number of uh, awards and recognitions in the field of catalysis. He's one of the national leaders leaders in, in this area has chaired Gordon conferences and has been editor of the Journal of Catalysis and uh, received many, many awards and accolades uh, from the catalysis community over the years. Um, his research interests are centered on the kinetics of heterogeneous catalytic reactions and catalysis characterization and the reaction conditions. And, uh, and, and really what, what we're excited to have him uh, here with us today is to talk about the progress that is being made in this uh, NSF Engineering Research Center, which is so timely and so important. Uh, you know, this was a big effort uh, that Fabio led uh, with many universities and a, and a very large uh, consortium of uh, private sector company partners uh, that really aims to transform in some sense the way in which uh, we utilize uh, the resources that emerged from uh, shell uh, fracking operations across the United States and globally. Um, so I'm going with that, I'm going to let uh, uh, Fabio uh, tell you all about the Engineering Research Center and the work uh, that he and his team are doing. So thank you. Okay, uh, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. I'm Fabio Ribeiro, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you uh, to Tomas for inviting me to give this, uh, this presentation. I interacted with uh, Tomas uh, from the beginning, uh, conception of ideas for, for the center, and she was of, he was of great help for us. He had uh, a background in the oil and gas industry. He had background uh, on, on uh, managing large projects, uh, and it was... Uh, uh, superb help as as I'm gonna uh, give you the uh, the uh, presentation. You see, on many ways that uh, that he helped us before to to have enough resources to to compete. And then once you get the center to to get it it going, all the help he gave us, the the connections with government, which I had no idea of how to how to be doing that it was all new uh, to us. And I'll, I'll show you a, a success story that's directly connected to uh, to Thomas to help us. Uh, reach uh, Congress and um, help the uh, country on this very important um, uh, project. So, the uh, the uh, our center is is called the Center for Innovative and Strategic Transformation of uh, Alkane Resources. We call it uh, C Star, um, and we um, the uh, in, in NSF likes you to. Uh, have one in, in a nutshell, what is it that uh, your, your center does? And it's responsibly realizing the potential of shale resources, right? So that's uh, in, in essence what our mission is. So I, um, 
um, I would like to um, the the agenda for for today. I I will start with the 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 opportunity the in terms of shale resources, and the reason I wanted to do that is that that's going to inform you why is that uh, what you need if you're interested in uh, um, putting together uh, an engineering research center. Uh, you will have to make sure that the uh, the, the opportunity is right. So I, I will tell you what what our idea was and and how we convinced NSF that, that this is an area that they should um, uh, invest. Then I wanted to tell you about uh, what is a National Science Foundation Engineering Research Center. It, it is something very special for for the foundation, and I wanted to explain that uh, to you also. And then going to more uh, details. Any engineering research center has four pillars, um, engineering and research, education, diversity and inclusion, and uh, in, in an innovation ecosystem. So I will describe to you where we are as an example of uh, uh, what is it that, that, that is needed. They wanted to see that, um, of course, in your when you write a proposal that needs to be very clear that you understand those four pillars and how you're going to develop them. And then I will give you an example. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, we'll, we'll have uh, uh, time at the end to uh, uh, talk about uh, if you have uh, uh, more questions and answers, but of course, also please feel free to ask uh, as, as we go. And you know, in the bottom there is, is the molecule that we're really interested in, which is ethane. Uh, there's a lot of it uh, and its value now, it's, uh, it's sold as the same as fuel, right? So it's, it's an opportunity to do great things uh, with that because the US now has so much of, of those uh, natural gas liquids. Okay, so um, first the opportunity, right? So about shale gas. So there are staggering amounts available through new technologies, right? So there were two new new technologies that were developed. And of course, this is the history of, of the United States, right? People, um, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, see opportunities, see ideas, see new technologies, and they put that into, um, in, into work to come up with something that's now uh, economically viable. Of course, when they started all this, the uh, you know the, the interesting story about this is that the the, uh, the super majors thought that this was you know uh, just uh, something on the side was interesting but this is never going to go anywhere and then uh, once they realized that uh, no this is this is a new technology that that's really going to go it was I mean, uh, kind of late for them to uh, to come in so there are two technologies one is called horizontal drilling so if you if you if you are in a in a point on the surface and you want to reach somewhere miles down and miles away from where you are, you can do that with the precision of a few feet. So it's an incredible technology that they can drill, they can put that drill um, anywhere uh, they want because those shale formations are not very, very thick. So they have to go there precisely at, at a particular position. Then once you get there, those, uh, those formations, they are not porous. So if you make a hole there and you try to extract anything from there, nothing flows. So then, they, there's a, the other technology that's called hydraulic fracturing or, or fracking. You inject the water and sand at pressure. So the water breaks the rock, the sand goes in between the fractures that you, uh, that you make with, with the high pressure water. And then when the pressure is released, the, uh, the sand prevents that, uh, in that, that uh, um, the, the shale to seal again, and then you can extract oil and gas. And, there is an, um, the reserves are projected to last 100 years at, at the current consumption level. So it, it's, uh, it's an incredible story for the United States. The, the US became you know, the largest uh, producer of um, um, uh, oil uh, in, in the world and then it produces all the gas it needs and exports gas. So the, the other question is, of course, people, um, don't want fossil fuels, we want it to go away. Um, uh, there are all kinds of disadvantages on, um, on, on having a, a, a fossil fuel, but there is a reality. So we are in, in agreement, as, as you see, we would like to be all uh, renewables, but here are two predictions on where the fossil fuels will be. Uh, one is from the Energy Information Administration, which is um, an agency of uh, the Department of Energy Independent. So they predicted, if you see on, on the graph on the left, 
uh, time versus uh, energy production of many forms of energy and, and I highlighted the ones that, that we're um, uh, interested in see started dry natural gas and natural gas liquids you see that all of them are, are, are going to um, uh, the prediction is that they are going to go up uh, renewables are also going to go up the uh, the oil is uh, eventually uh, coming down but you, you see that um, it, it's not that you know, in a few years we're not going to have fossil fuels anymore right then you have another prediction from Chevron and you can look at, at the super majors it will be all similar and now this graph here is a bar graph where you have liquids natural gas coal nuclear and renewables 2018 2040 you see that the, the consumption of energy is going to go up right because everybody would like to be like the US have all, all the energy to, to have a good life and it, you can see there that in terms of uh, uh, natural gas uh, and, and liquids, uh, the consumption actually going to go up. But in terms of percentage, they predict it's going to be about the same. So uh, natural gas will continue to be a major part of the uh, energy mix for many years. Um, and the idea for us is that we call ourselves a bridge fuel. Right? We can help decrease the CO2 footprint because it's a better fuel in, in uh, 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 processes. Now, uh, now that, that you see what the, uh, the, the opportunity is, I'd like to, to talk to you about uh, uh, an engineering research center. So according to NSF, this is their flagship, uh, uh, according to them, uh, grant that uh, the, the foundation gives. Uh, so they, they are very uh, proud of it. They're very uh, careful uh, about it. It's, it's something very special uh, for them. So the, the general idea is that if you, if you can identify an, an opportunity for the country uh, that currently has technical gaps to be uh, realized, um, and if those gaps, if resolved, would have a large benefit for the country and you need a diverse engineering team to tackle those those gaps that are missing and this technology that's missing to to whatever um, uh, great idea that that that, uh, that you have. Then um, um, probably uh, NSF um, wants to to hear from you, right? So then it could be uh, any any uh, area of uh, uh, engineering now. To realize that they they think that you need time, right? So that's the beauty about this grant. It's for ten years. Uh, they give you about uh, it, it increased now. Um, so ours is about four million dollars a year, and we have to cost share twenty percent. So it's about five million dollars uh, per year. The uh, the current ones are about twenty percent higher uh, than, than than that. So it's called Generation Four. We are Generation Three. So, but still around uh, you know five million dollars uh, per year, which is not enough, by the way, to 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 do what you need to, to be doing. They they give you kind of seed funding, and then you go and find the rest of, of the resources you need. You can have three to five uh, uh, institutions. Uh, one of them has to be a minority uh, institution. We are five institutions. There is always a lead university. The uh, the contract is written with the lead university, and then we write subcontracts to our uh, partners. And 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 part of this, as I will explain to you, the the objective of an engineering research center is to provide what uh, uh, they call an engineered system. So you're gonna present a gadget that uh, you are you are developing to industry, and you say, look, this is that that opportunity that I told you about. Here it is, uh, and then you need uh, you need the help from the industry from the beginning to bring that gadget or that technology into market. Uh, and if you can uh, produce that engineered system, and if industry actually takes that and commercializes, then the engineering research center is successful. So it, it's a very the uh, the idea of success here is, is different, right? It's not that they they want they want you usually an NSF grant, right? Except pretty much for this one, what you do is you take the money once once you you get it, then you know you do your get your research done, you publish papers, and and everybody's happy, right? Here, that's one of the things you need to do, but you need to come up with a with a um, uh, an engineered system. So 
you need uh, you need companies to, to help you on the left um, you will you will see it's one one of the pillars i told you you have the, the 30 companies that um, that we have available so um though this is the location of the of the uh, uh, uh current as of uh, uh summer of 2020 uh, so there are four new centers that are not there and four others that um, um sunsetted already so um you can see on the bottom uh, you see those um, uh, circles um with um the uh, various areas that uh, uh, the centers are, are working on. So by biotechnology and healthcare, and you, and you can see that there are some of them that are in the area. There is energy, sustainability, and infrastructure. That's where CSTAR is. There, is, there are uh, centers in advanced manufacturing and microelectronic sensitive and, and, uh, and IT. So depending on, on, on that color, um, uh, you see that uh, where the, this, the, uh, the centers go. So also, you can see the, the distribution in the US. So if you are going to apply for one of those, um, NSF, uh, um, you will have, if, first of all, if you already have some, some, someone that, that has done what you want to do or is doing that already, there is no chance. Um, if uh, you have too many centers in a certain state already, right, then they, they don't like to, to see it. They would like to see an other centers going to other areas of the US. So then you should be looking at, 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 at you know, it's very important to, to look at those. And also they look at the distribution, right? They don't want to focus in a particular area, right? So, so then uh, if you're thinking about applying, you should look at the current centers and where you could fit and also see the, the centers that, that are gonna, for example, uh, retire, right? Because they, they like to, to see also the various engineering, right? So ours is, a lot of it is in chemical engineering, right? So then, yeah, they could fund another one in chemical engineering, but they're probably not going to fund three. Uh, so you have to, you know, take a look at that depending on 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 uh, on where you are, right? So they they, they like they like to spread the wealth. Um, so some facts, uh, there are not too many of them. Uh, 12 to, to uh, 20 at, at any given time. And the process takes two years, right? So they're gonna open now, uh, uh, they, they've just funded um, uh, uh, some centers and they open already a competition. They're probably gonna tell people now um, you're supposed to have sent your, um, uh, your ideas, um, your pre-proposals and then on those pre-proposals they're going to take um, uh, some proposals i think when we applied if i remember uh, you know the, the, the numbers were roughly 200 pre-proposals and and they took about i think 16 of those uh, uh pre-proposals they asked people to write proposals then uh, about this time of the year they, they, they'll, they'll tell the uh, um the um Prospective centers, you should uh, uh, prepare a proposal. It's, it's it was due by by summertime, uh, early summer, and then by the end of summer, they're gonna tell you they're gonna choose probably eight out of sixteen, and those eight then they come and they have a, um, a site visit, which is a copy of a, of an annual review, right, to see if you can to see if you can do it, uh, and then. Uh, of those eight, then you have a, a, a site visit, and then you have what they call a reverse site visit, where the, this really the decision is, is going to be made. Then you present everything again, and then they judge everything from they go to NSF, and then they make their final decision. Usually, they take four centers. Uh, so the level of review, in our case, we have 90 uh, technical education, government, diversity experts that review the, the, the proposal. You're going to be if you go all the way, you're going to respond to every comment that, that they made. And we're talking about uh, you know, 50 page uh, reports, uh, 50 page reports for questions for you to answer. <laughs> um, and then you know, the, the effort is, is very uh, significant. Uh, you need to have um, um, uh, people, usually from, from uh, in your, uh, Tomas' office there, that, that's going to give you uh, 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 how to uh, write the, a large uh, proposal. Uh, then you have to organize the site visit, coordinate all activities. You really need a, a, a team that's experienced on how to do that. 
to tell you the the, uh, the, the, the the truth, when I started doing that, I had no idea uh, really. You know, I, I I knew the technical piece, but you know, the technical piece is a is a small um, thing. So you 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 do need a um, uh, a part. But the good news for you is that you have Tomas there with you. He he uh, has a lot of experience. Uh, he 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 was uh, very close with us as, as we were. Uh, um, uh, competing and he helped us on uh, on, on 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 the ver various uh, panels that uh, that uh, we had. We made sure that he was available uh, to to uh, help us. Um, you know, again, it's it's a it's a two year it's a ten year uh, uh, prospect. It says prospect because it's five years, five years. They give you five years first, then on year three, uh, during year four, they uh, they will do a. Um, a review to to decide if they're going to pass on to the next five years. Ninety five percent of the centers go into the uh, into this the second uh, um, the, the next five years because they make a lot of a lot of investment. They, they they know that five years is not enough, so they will usually help you to to uh, to go forward. But that doesn't mean that every year is. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I lost a lot of hair. <laughs> Uh, on, on this, it's 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 really uh, you know they put your your feet to the fire. They come and uh, they they have demands, and uh, they, uh, if you don't follow what what they tell you, you're in big trouble. So it's it's um, it's it's not that they give you money and go away. It's uh, it's um, um, it's a partnership with NSF. They they they, they want your success, but um, they want you to um, work very hard. And the uh, the uh, the success rate is about two percent. Um, so, so it's uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a lot of work to uh, to uh, be doing. My my suggestion, uh, which is what we did, I we put all the eggs in, in one basket. Uh, and if you would um, you know could have broken, in, pretty much I would have lost a, a lot on all my research and, and um, two years of uh, of working on this. <laughs> so uh, it, it is a it is a big commitment from uh, from everyone. Now, in terms of our vision, you see the map of the United States, uh, and you see the uh, the um, uh, the distribution of shale resources. Uh, they are all over the uh, the United States, and they cover thousands of miles. People don't don't want to have pipelines all around. So our idea was to to create a way to take those light hydrocarbons, which the U.S. has about four million barrels per day equivalent of those light hydrocarbons. I mean, and, and the US needs about 19 million barrels a day of, of, of uh, uh, liquid um, oil and, and produces about you know, uh, 12 million uh, or so. So the US still needs to, to convert, uh, um, if they could convert some of those light hydrocarbons into liquids it would give the country about $100 billion a year that you could make uh, in terms of value uh, to transform those light gases into uh, yeah, liquid fuels, right? So this is, you're talking about fuels, right? So if you think about chemicals and so on, so the, the opportunity for the country is huge, right? And, and that's something that you need to, to uh, that's what sold to, to NSF, right? So he said, look, here's the issue, if you solve it, that's going to mean for the country a hundred billion dollars per year uh, in, in in value, um, and in, in terms of economy, it's distributed all over the country. Uh, if you can really uh, uh, make um, those uh, plants to be modular, much smaller, now instead of having concentrated manufacturing, you could spread that. You would, which is, the chemical industry is not doing, but it would be a huge benefit for the country. Right. So then, you know, yeah, they thought that it would be. You know, it's difficult. Um, uh, there are some gaps there that are very clear what they are. So they said, yeah, that's that's a good vision, uh, and and they 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 funded us. Although you know, even even before, and, and I can tell you, even at our um, uh, university at, at at Purdue, when they first talking about uh, uh, shale, right, um, we we couldn't get anywhere. There was no not much support. Uh, so we had to try for four years before we could even apply for this there was not much support because of, of, of this idea of uh, um, fossil fuels, right? Uh, but 
it, it in fact it doesn't make sense and if, if you an engineer if you understand the magnitude of energy that we are using especially in the us right 80 percent of our energy comes from fossil fuels you cannot just flip into renewables the technology is just the cost right it would cost many times our our annual gnp many times over to be able to go from one form of energy into the other so that's not going to happen uh, you know very fast right but you but it will happen so the idea is that if you go to 80 percent of fossil fuels uh, in, in terms of energy, which is what the, the world uses, into the other side of this bridge, where you would like uh, to have uh, uh, renewables, while you're crossing this bridge, you'd like to emit the least amount of CO2 you can. And so that's the idea of C-STAR, right? It's not the final solution, it's, uh, but it is something that's gonna take us there, which a much better fuel, right? Um, a lot of, uh, um, countries still use coal. A lot of countries are building new coal plants now because that's the resource we, they have, right? So if you can help them to use this other fuel, the amount of CO2 generated until you get to the other side of the bridge would be smaller, right? So I wanted to move now next to the, uh, to the C-STAR pillars. Um, so we have um, uh, four pillars and every engineering research center needs to have those those four pillars so uh, engineering um, uh, and research is is one and that's where most of the funding goes uh, uh, and, and for the reasons for that is is pretty obvious right there are some gaps that you identify that you need to 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 overcome right so then that's the uh, one of the objectives of the center now, if you're going to launch this new revolution, you need to form the people who, who will understand this and, and, and even during the, during the life of the center are going to go and go to industry and be educated in the boss, best possible way to, to bring this revolution forward. You have to do that in an, in an inclusive way. Uh, a, a problem of this magnitude, you cannot do that yourself. Uh, with uh, with uh, you know a group that's that's uh, that's very homogeneous. You need people with uh, ideas from everywhere. Um, so the inclusion is is in terms of of ideas, is in terms of people, in terms of of their um, upbringing. So it has to be a center that that uh, um, welcomes um, uh, diversity um, and uh, also we help the uh, the um, underrepresented uh, minorities with uh, special programs. So this is something very important for us. Now, the, uh, the last one uh, that I'm gonna mention, the, the, uh, the, the innovation ecosystem is that if, if you're gonna really think about commercialization economy, doing something that's gonna be good for the country that, that can really make a difference, you need to help from industry, right? Those are the people who know uh, exactly where uh, in the, where the market is and what's important. You need to be talking to them to make sure that, that your mission is, is on target. So next I will, I will tell you about the, uh, uh, the, the, the various pillars. So first is, uh, um, I, I told you all, all of this and, and this is how this, the, uh, the org chart of the, of the center uh, looks like. You, you see on, on the left, the engineering and research that I told you that's divided in, in, in a matrix, actually. One is the research that, that you could see that those are the, um, uh, the, uh, the uh, roles. And then uh, there are the test beds where the technology happens and the test beds crosses the various trusts. So, so there is that, that, that piece on, on engineering and research. There is a management uh, team uh, and then the, the site leaders, workforce uh, development people, uh, that help us with the, the education and assessment. The in, in industry and innovation, we have two people working on that, and then uh, the diversity and inclusion. And some of those uh, the staff are full-time, and they sit together with the, uh, the director at, uh, where the, uh, at the lead university. Now, it's very important that if you're, try, if you're trying to solve a, a um, uh, problem or looking at, at an opportunity, the way to solve it is to do a top-down approach. So you define what the opportunity is, right? which is called, um, this is called, by the way, a three-plane diagram, which is it's a requirement for, for all ERCs. 
So then you will have on the systems plane, then you define what is it that you want to, to be doing. So we want to transform light gases into fuels and chemicals. Okay, then, then you specify what you need. Then that is gonna define uh, uh, a, a type of technology that you can break down. We call it the enabling technologies. And you need to be able to have a, a lab scale modules where you can test those ideas at the, the actual conditions right? so that you can then um, uh, uh, help industry, right? convince industry that you have something that, 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 that works. Well, if, if you have, if you know what, what you want to do, then you go into the lab uh, and then you can find out for this technology to, to work that you have many modules and what are the gaps on those modules? Why is that this technology is not um, um, now commercialized? Well, because there are gaps. Then uh, once you define what those gaps are, then on the fundamental knowledge, then, then you define the problems for the researchers in the lab that then they will have um, um, benchmarks that they know here's what I need to accomplish to help a, a, an enabling technology that's then gonna be together on a system and then we're gonna be able to deliver our engineered system, right? So it, this is very important that this is not a team of uh, people that are very uh, accomplished uh, they work very well together. They have all kinds of ideas. Then they, they get together, they, they discover something and then they say, ah, let's see what we're gonna use this for. That's not what, a, what an engineering research center is. This is, this is will be the bottom up, it's top down. We, we know what we want to, to, to produce, right? And then that's gonna inform what's gonna be in the lab. Uh, this is critical, right? That, that you understand that so that when you write your proposal when when uh, when you anything you do and in fact if you're trying to solve a problem in, in industry right that's how people do it they go top down uh, so um, I mentioned to you that the uh, the final um, uh, deliverable success for, for the center is to deliver an engineered system so in our case what is that? Well, so if, if you look at um, uh, this, uh, this, this diagram, so this is uh, you know, a process where you, uh, you see on the left, you come with, with, with uh, the, uh, the, the gas that, that comes from, from the ground, you have to do some gas treatment. Then uh, in, in our case, here's one process that, that we have. We, we're gonna have uh, some separations. Then uh, we're gonna have some methane uh, from, from, from the other liquids. Then we're going to activate those uh, those uh, hydrocarbons. They're, they're not very. Um, you cannot do too much chemistry with them. So we, in technical terms, or one of the ways of activating, you do something called the dehydrogenation. You put a double bond there. Then those molecules become much more reactive. Then you need to do some separations again. Then you need to do a reaction again called oligomerization, where you stitch together those, those light hydrocarbons so that you form a liquid and then you separate them again, you do a recycle. You do an economic analysis on, on, on all this, which is, uh, that's one of our thrusts. Very important, right? So is this economic? Uh, how does it compare with the projects that, that, that we have going, right? So th there is a team that's doing um, all, all this uh, for us. Then there's the technology modules. We need to test each of those modules at the uh, practical conditions for industry uh, so that we can, um, in, in our case, we cannot deliver the whole uh, piece that, that, that you see there. It would be much more expensive than the whole grant. So then we have to do some simulations um, and, and then hopefully then convince industry that now you have a uh, engineered system that in that uh, industry then will 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 take and then make it uh, uh, commercial. And if you do that, then your engineering center succeeded. So it's very important that um, uh, uh, you know, th th that idea needs to be very clear, right? They want to see a gadget, right? So in our case, our gadget is very expensive, um, uh, so we cannot you know, give to them. Here it is, but you know, maybe if you're doing something like uh, you're doing a, a bio sensor that you're going to inject into a person. It's going to measure the glucose and 
So maybe your gadget, it's something very small you can actually produce, right? So then the NSF wants to see that. Uh, and so uh, that's what they call your engineered system. Uh, here is, is a, a, another uh, leg of, of the center, uh, the, the innovation ecosystem. You can see the, uh, the, the picture on top where you see the C-star on center. And again, there is the, the, the interaction, which, which again, they are, are, are the, uh, the, the four leg. There is education, there is partnership with industry, there is the research, there is the government uh, institutions. We interact with the federal government, with foreign governments all over the, uh, the, the world, uh, national labs, um, industries. We, we talk to people that are venture uh, capital to, uh, to push this, this uh, um, technology forward. So we have the, uh, you see on, on, on the lower bottom, the technology incubators on, on the various universities to take this technology and, 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 and push forward. We have on the center, the, uh, the companies that help us and, uh, and then all the way to the right, you have many institutions around the world and uh, um, many of the national labs, for example, that, uh, that help us. So here is one example that I, um, I mentioned to you in the beginning that uh, um, Thomas helped us very much. We, uh, since uh, uh, this grant started, we've been talking to, uh, to uh, 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 Congress, the, uh, the uh, the House uh, Science Committee. We talked to, to, to them. Uh, we, you know, tell them that this is a very important tech, um, technology for the country, and explain to them why. You know, it's it's a conversation that we we, we talk to them. Um, so we worked on what's called the Energy Bill. Um, that if, if if you're following this, uh, this is the Energy Blueprint for the country that's uh, um, uh, updated every. You know, 15 years or so, it has just been updated. Um, so we 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 work with them uh, uh, to convince them that this area should be there. Unfortunately, it, it was not included uh, into the what's called the energy bill, right? Which is this this um, uh, blueprint or where the country should go. Um, and and I didn't have any slides on on that here. But then what what we we were able to convince them. On the water and energy bill, which is for fiscal year 2021, uh, that uh, that this area is very important. So they ask the Department of Energy, the the the, uh, the, the, uh, the fossil energy, to to think about what could be done with those light gases, and to then uh, write a report back to Congress. And then you know if they think this is um, uh, interesting for the country, they may um, decide to fund this. So it, this is not any money for C-STAR directly. Again, this is helping the country to make sure that uh, resources are gonna be allocated for, for this area. And, and hopefully there'll be many uh, calls open to, to uh, many uh, national labs and, and uh, universities to work in this particular area. So this is, uh, we, we, um, it, it's uh, entirely due to uh, um, uh, Tomas. He helped us to navigate this and how to talk to, to the people. I have, you know, again, no idea how, how to do that. But again, that's something that an engineering research center is supposed to be doing, right? Help the country uh, and, 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 and tell people why this is so important. Um, so it's not for our, for our profit. Uh, at all, we actually spend resources to make sure that, uh, that, that this idea goes goes forward. Um, so here is is just a, um, a slide showing the, the the value chain. NSF wants to see whatever uh, area that, that that you are um, that you that there is a value chain, right? There is in our case there is extraction, there is you know production, there is separation, and then uh, there is formulation, and eventually distribution, right? So they want to see that you have companies that are in all those areas that are working with you, right? which is not easy to, to get a uh, convinced companies to, to join because they, they, have, they need to pay a fee, uh, right? That's what uh, NSF wants to make sure that they're there, uh, that they cost them. So it's, they're not there just to, because you, you, you know somebody at the company it doesn't cost them anything. They have to participate and also contribute financially, but you know, it's small contribution, but once you have 30 companies, it becomes a significant uh, contribution for the center. Uh, so this innovation ecosystem I mentioned to you, just to give you an idea of many parts of, of, of the world that we have and collaboration in the US and 
um, 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 everywhere um, in many uh, continents that, that we have uh, collaborations. Uh, so this is you know, a wonderful opportunity, again, to make your idea of what you want to be doing to help the world. Right? So if you really believe that what you're doing is important, not only for the country, but, but for the world, which is, you know, it, it is our case. Now, the, uh, the, the other uh, pillar is the, uh, the diversity and, and culture of uh, inclusion. Um, and here you, you can see on, on the left uh, what we do for broadening representation and building a culture of, of including, inclusion. Uh, we have uh, underrepresented races and ethnicities, women, first generation college veterans, persons with disabilities. We have uh, special programs uh, with that. We, we work together with the workforce development, which is the, the uh, education. And, and on, the, on, on the right top, you see some of the uh, uh, in initiatives in terms of more, more details of what we do, how we train our students to make sure that, that they, are, uh, they learn um, about the, uh, the diversity of, uh, uh, and, and inclusion, and also that we help people that are disadvantaged. Uh, on, on the workforce the development, you can see there on the on, on the graph, we do we do have people of, of that age that uh, that that uh, you see kindergarten all the way to postdoctoral. So it is um, it, it is a very uh, interesting, and then you, you may think about where where is the funding for all this, right? and then we we apply for for funding. We we we, we make uh, partnerships with. Uh, all kinds of uh, institutions, and then um, that's what NSF wants to see that their their uh, um, uh, money is uh, goes uh, forward um, as much as, as you can. They, they want to see leverage. Um, so, so here are, are some of the of the programs for workforce development and culture of inclusion that uh, we have. We have professional development and mentoring. Here's some of the of the courses that uh, that uh, we have uh, in uh, uh, mentoring. So we 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 have to show to NSF that that the our graduate students are, are trained like no other, right? So that's that's the uh, uh, something that they, they want us to show that uh, and then spread that for us as much uh, as we can, which which we do. Uh, so here is another example of uh, uh, education. Uh, there is a student uh, development of courses that uh, we develop. There is a, um, a C-STAR outreach that we do from K to 12, and we were able to reach 10,562 kids uh, in 2018. Uh, we also have a program for research experience for undergraduates, uh, um, young scholars, which are high school uh, students, and we have key partnerships also with the National Society of Black Engineers um, uh, to increase um, opportunities in, in underrepresented minorities. Uh, so with the, uh, with the pandemic, um, you see on the left that we used to go to classrooms, but then we, 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 we've been doing all this um, uh, 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 remotely. And so we uh, some very interesting uh, programs that uh, that they do live with using Zoom with, with with the kids. So they go to their kitchen there, and then we come up with with uh, with things to make uh, you know their life more interesting there. So to help the uh, teachers to engage the uh, the students. Uh, so we have a program uh, research experience for 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 teachers. So those are high school that come to us during summer. We help them develop. Um, uh, modules that they could then uh, 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 go to their classroom and, and teach their their students the modules that they they um, developed here, and we uh, make a, a presentation, uh, help them make presentations, help them develop the uh, uh, material. Um, in, in terms of uh, professional uh, development, we. We, uh, we team up with uh, Dow Chemical and uh, we are offering a, a course in industrial reaction engineering and we, we plan to offer other courses in, in other areas. So this is something that universities cannot give uh, uh, because it is really the, uh, the industrial piece, right? So you need to be in industry to understand what is it that it's not on, uh, in most notebooks, what is it that's really needed 
if you want to uh, practice uh, uh, engineering. So um, um, we, we advertise that and we have over 600 uh, participants from all over the world that uh, um, um, attend those courses. If you have not seen that, by the way, uh, the, the course are still uh, are going on. We are on lecture six now. So um, you know, we have one lecture per month. So, um, and then when we have our annual meetings, then we have three lectures, but we, this will take until the end of this year to, to complete. Uh, so here is an example of our, our uh, summer uh, uh, programs. Uh, this is called Summer Engineering Experience for Kids. And it, it's, it's, it's part of the National Society of Black Engineers. We teamed up uh, with them. There is a video there uh, that's uh, on, on the bottom uh, of, of that um, uh, uh, image that uh, uh, you see. And uh, we, we are um, a very successful uh, program uh, for us. Uh, and we're very proud of uh, being helping the uh, uh, underrepresented uh, minorities. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, con conclusions, um, the, uh, the ERCs are, are great opportunities for our country. Uh, in our case, our topic is light hydrocarbon conversions. Um, we still think it's the right topic at the right time. It's a huge opportunity for the country. Um, it's a team effort. It's a, a very um, a, important. In fact, you can't you can't you can't do it uh, alone. Um, so um, and you need to um, put together a team that works together well. Right. So it um, it's 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 not easy to uh, uh, do that because usually uh, our faculty they are uh, they like to work by themselves uh, and you can't just uh, give me the money and uh, even if you go by yourself and do some great stuff back and say here's what i've done that's not the idea the idea is to go together so we can reach out faster and the uh, the institutions uh, will need to uh, uh, get uh, together uh, and then we need support from all partners and uh, remember the uh, the four pillars. Um, so uh, with that, I I be happy to answer questions. Hey, thank you. Can you all hear me? I, I hope so. Thank you so much, yeah. Fabio. That was a fantastic tour through what an engineering research center at NSF is and what your efforts have been and what your the theme and the importance of the topic. Um, I have a question for you. Um, uh, Michelle, can, can everybody hear me? I can hear you, yes, everybody can hear you. But, but okay, so the audience can hear me too? Yes, sir. All right, good, 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 excellent. Um, so Fabio, I have a question. You described early on the complexities of putting an engineering research center together, the amount and the scale of the effort, the amount of uh, institutional support that you need, and and you you mentioned that uh, the chances of winning one is two percent, um, roughly. And yeah, it's a very prestigious, but very difficult. Can you comment a little bit? And and I think I gather some of it from your presentation. But can you comment a little bit on the upside? Um, uh, why did you do it? Why why did you uh, and how did the university support you? Uh, as the leader of this engineering research center, uh, and, and what made you want to do this? Yeah, so so Thomas, it's it's a, it's a, it's a really a labor of, of love, right? So um, so you you asked me why to let me ask that question first. Why is that I did it? Because my 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 colleagues are smarter than I am. Nobody wanted to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a lot of work. Uh, it you you know in my case I used to have twenty graduate students. In, uh, I was doing just research and you know, research was my thing, and I wanted to have nothing to do with this. And now I have two graduate students that are co-advised, and um, and I and I struggle to talk to to, to them. So um, so if you're going to be doing that, then you need to. Uh, you need to have a, um, a reason for that. You have to believe that what you're doing is really important. It's you're gonna have to pretty much leave uh, leave your your research to your colleagues, and you have to raise money for them. 
that's 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 the mission of the of the director and are you really going to do that this is not to promote yourself this is to promote the team um, and so I think that's uh, for a director, you need to, to have that in mind. Why, why are you doing that, right? Well, because I really believe that you can uh, make a difference in the lives of uh, uh, people. Um, and I, I could have contributed in, in other ways, but now, you know, the education that I do and the research that I do is different from what it used to be before. So it's, it's something that's very important. And if you don't have a director, somebody needs to be in charge of this, right? Because in the end, everyone is very busy. Right, um, and yep. especially if you have a team like we have, we really have a team of stars. Um, you know, we have um, eight members of the National Academy of Engineering, one member of the National Academy of Science. Uh, you know, amazing colleagues I have. Uh, so they are busy doing other things, right? So then, uh, if somebody needs to go and go and do it, uh, and and um, and shake the bushes and, and do things that people that don't want to do. Um, so the other thing uh, you need is you need that incredible staff because alone you, you, you can't do it. You, you, you need to have a staff to, uh, to help you because the pressures and deadlines and it, it's too great. So if you don't have somebody to help you that you can really trust, uh, you can't do it. But you need to have also the institutional support right, to help you uh, to, to manage all this. And um, if, if you are going to go and, and you know, th 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 that idea that, that, that I showed to you, okay, here's the big opportunity for the country, right? So if you cannot tell them, if you cannot tell why in two sentences, why your center, and if it's too long, you have to, it's too complicated, probably they, they are not interested, right? Um, so I, I'll give you an example. There is a center that was just uh, approved uh, by NSF. When, when they first came and talked to us, they're going to say, look, we, we are doing um, uh, uh, energy, uh, storage, um, electrical, uh, and we are already, a, they, they were already a center, but they were not funded by NSF. They already had all the structure. And, and so he, he, this is the problem now, right? So they, so they, when they proposed that, they said, there's no way NSF is not going to give that to you. I mean, you are in, you are showing, right? Uh, the very beginning, because it's, it's the problem, right? That NSF would, would say, oh yeah, somebody that can, uh, have a way of uh, storing energy and, and all the way of um, electricity around the country and so on. So you need to have that. Um, and then if, if you're, even if you have that idea, right, then you have to show in a sense that you have, why you, why you, you do you have the, 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 uh, the, the, the team? And I've been told that in our case, um, there were four other centers that had the same idea that we had. So we were competing head to head in four other centers right around the, 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 the country. And I've been told that the reason why we got it and the others didn't is because we had preliminary results that we already published. And why, how did, did we get that? Our school of chemical engineering put money there in advance and you say, okay, I'm gonna help you on that. And here's, here's they helped us. And so we, we, we hired faculty in advance uh, and uh, we had results and and without that, we would not have won. And they say, they say you're really into that. So that's what I said. That if, if you're going to do it, then you know you should go full. You have to forward. go all in. Yes. Yeah. And some people, you know, are, maybe they are smarter than than than, um, than I am. But they, they do look. I will do some effort. And if we're lucky, we, we get it and so on. But I'm not going to put all my you know my effort in. I'm not going to go all, all in. And, but if we if we win, you know, we did very well. So maybe that that works um, for for some, um, but for us it was not that case. It was just um, all, all out effort. Yes. A lot of effort. Yeah. A lot of support from the institution, right? Yeah. <clears throat> good. 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 Other questions? We'll leave it open in the chat. Yeah, so I, I had a question if if uh, if we could if we could have yes. this. I, I think that the presentation is 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 recorded anyway, right? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I guess people will have uh, access to that. There is there is nothing confidential there. Um, Good. And we'll make the recording available online, um, probably on Monday. Yeah. Well, well, you know, of, of course, this is this is. Uh, I should have a. a uh, thank you to uh, to the National Science Foundation, right? Because without their their support, uh, this this wouldn't be. Um, 
so, so that you know what 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 the, uh, the 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 process is, this is such a, a large center that uh, the uh, uh, the engineering and education center division EEC that provides these grants to us. Once what they can do is they make a recommendation that uh, uh, the uh, that they have this grant, but then, then the NSF Science Board needs to 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 approve it. So then they have to do a lot of internal work. To convince NSF that this is, you know, actually a, a good uh, investment for the country. So, you know, the the, um, uh, the partnership with NSF uh, is uh, is very important. And they are just fantastic people. I mean, they, they just uh, they're really nice to work with them. Very good, very good, Fabio. Fantastic. Um, so, um, I, I have. Let me let me ask you. You you talked about industry a lot and the partnership with industry. Um, as you look forward, you know, to the progress of SciStar, you're now what, in the third year, second year? We, we are entering year four. You're entering year four. Okay, okay, good. So you got another about six years to go. How do you see, uh, and, and, and how do you facilitate the transfer of these technologies to your industry partners and the, the, the adoption of the new not just the fundamental knowledge, but the new technology modules and the systems by your in that, by your industry partners. Yeah, so they are, of course they are looking for most of the companies that are working with us, uh, if not all of them. Not all of them, because some of them are are just there. Because they, they they are not interested in technology directly, but they they have something they watch on, on, on yeah. tangent. But most companies are directly um, knowledgeable. Uh, of what we are doing. In fact, they uh, yeah, they have very large teams working on the same things that, that we are. So if if we find out a technology that is uh, uh, commercial, uh, then I think that they will they will be very interested in in taking that. But uh, having said that, uh, I think that the uh, the opportunity may be with the smaller uh, companies right? as as the uh, the you know the technology incubators um so companies maybe uh, it's not enough maybe what we will be doing uh, many of them are looking for the next step and you say you know, show me in a demonstration plant that this really works uh, you know spend you know 50 million dollars and say this works then then i'll buy everything from you right yeah. so then then uh, we need uh, to have um, uh, the buy-in, and that's what we're doing, uh, working with other government agencies to go into the next step, right? And then also working with some companies that are smaller, uh, they are very hungry and, and, and they want to, to move this, this forward so that then once that, that works, right, then uh, the large companies are gonna go forward, but because the investments are, are very large. Thanks, Fabio. Hey, there's a there are a couple of questions in the Q and A. Uh, one about um, um, yeah, planning I, I, phase. Yeah, you want to address that quickly? Yeah. So, so, so the the um, uh, how much commitment do we need to have from uh, from from the industry? So, um, so it, it's it's a a, um, a a good question because NSF wants to see that that we are. Um, uh, engaged uh, with with industry, so how many uh, they they don't do not say, you know, I would say five to 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 ten, and they have to write you a letter saying if you're funded, we're gonna be member. Uh, is that two, Fabio? Sorry, is that two at the planning uh, uh, phase, uh, the pre-proposal phase? I mean, you know, we 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 some teams around here are thinking about submitting pre-proposals, you know, in the planning phase. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think if if um, if I understand correctly, you you already submitted your your pre proposals, and then you're probably going to hear back soon from the NSF if you're going to go to writing your your next phase, which is no, those haven't been submitted. Those are due later in February, so, uh, okay. so there's still some time. Yeah, so I think I think people are thinking about the planning phase. Uh, well, how so much? Yeah, so 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 there, I think in in, in the terms of, of your planning proposal is to convince them, you know, that idea that I, that I, that I told you. In tell me in, in two sentences why is that you should have an engineering research center, right? Why is that you're gonna? What is it that you're gonna solve for the country that without you 
uh, it's it's not going to happen. Right? If you have that that um, that that answer, then uh, you have a very good chance of uh, 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 getting their attention. And remember, this is going to be maybe two hundred plus proposals, right? So then you know, the way in a self review, they're going to ask reviewers, right? So they're going to you have to convince them. It has to be very quickly you understand what what you're doing, right? Um, and and also you know, it's the whole engineering, right? So then all areas and how do you know your, your reviewers know what you're talking about and NSF you do their best, but we don't know. So, yeah. so writing that correctly uh, is, is, is very important, uh, concise to the point. Good, thanks, thanks. I think so the next question is sort of uh, along the same lines, right? The pre-selection time and, and, um, and to improve your proposal. Yeah, so 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 Lance, we we um we worked uh, with um we, we asked some funds. Um, well, I think that the most money came. We we actually hired faculty, right? We uh, we we work in, in in the area of in Lance knows that, that that well in in catalysis and, and in catalysis you need again four pillars, right? You need to to uh, to uh, prepare the uh, the uh, the materials. You need to to um, characterize those materials. You need to test those materials, and then you need people that can do a theory on that to help you what you cannot do experimentally. And so we made this investment by hiring four faculty in this area. Right, so huge. That that's where where the money went. Uh, and then they also gave us some um, um, uh, seed funding to um, to start working on that. Because when you write the your, your proposal, right, that's what I told you. I think that's what made us win that because we we not only had the team. But you also have results, and you say, "Look, we, I think this thing is going to work. Here it is." Right? Otherwise, it's all hypothetical. Right? Um, Interesting. Okay. Well, very good. Look, I mean, it's twelve thirty-two. So, um, and I know you have uh, some other one of your SciStar national team meetings today coming up, and other commitments. So, really, really appreciate you taking the time to walk us uh, through all of this. I suspect that as we go forward, there's gonna be a lot of questions uh, from uh, teams uh, who are thinking about ERCs. And uh, you know, if it's okay with you, we'll probably be reaching back out to you at some point uh, to so, get more of your insights. So Thomas, are we gonna meet again next? Is it the idea or not? Yeah, uh, we were thinking about that. I want to have John Antonio, who is on the, on the call, um, uh, who is Senior Associate Vice President in my office, coordinate that yeah, along yeah, with Clara yeah, Smith yeah. in the Center for Faculty Excellence and see if, uh, um, you know, if, if the teams that are thinking about ERCs, um, yeah. you know, find a time to meet with you and go, go in more detail. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a All great right. weekend. And yeah, uh, we'll be talking soon. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.